Welcome to building scalable multi-tire systems with DataSnap XE3. This is Codebridge 7 session. My name is Paweł Głowacki. I'm working for Embarcadero as technical lead for Delphi and RAD Studio for Europe. On this uh, slide, you can see the address of my blog where I'm going to post all uh, code samples and applications that I'm going to uh, demonstrate to today uh, for this uh, Codebridge 7 DataSnap session. The agenda is uh, very much straightforward. I'm going to start with a, a little discussion uh, of the DataSnap architecture, the DataSnap stack, and that I'm going to follow with a number of uh, live demonstrations illustrating different uh, techniques and di different uh, ways to create a multi-tire scalable uh, applications uh, with DataSnap and Delphi XE3. So I'm going to start from, uh, with a, a Hello World example, so just to give you an overview what is the pro process of creating a, a um, basic uh, data snap example. Then I'm going to follow it with an example of a simple database uh, multi-tier application. And then I'm going to talk about different options for uh, server classes uh, lifecycle. Uh, so this is quite important when you uh, talk about scalable systems. Uh, the one level of scalability is how you deploy your applications, but it's also important uh, what is the internal architecture of the server. And the uh, lifecycle option on the server methods is uh, critical to uh, achieve pro proper architecture. Another important uh, aspect in um, scalable uh, systems is a possibility to uh, mm, use callbacks. Uh, so with a uh, data snap, we have a possibility to uh, broadcast notifications uh, to different connected clients or to um, create peer-to-peer -peer communication. So I'm going to demonstrate uh, broadcasting. And then the last demo is uh, all about the security. Uh, so um, data snap has uh, support for fine-grained uh, fine uh, security based on the roles. Uh, so we have a uh, support for uh, authentication and authorization. I'm going to demonstrate uh, how you can actually uh, author, uh, author first authenticate the user and then authorize it uh, to uh, different uh, operations. So, and then this uh, application I'm going to uh, deploy to the uh, Amazon Web Services uh, EC2 uh, cloud. Okay, so uh, DataSnap is one of the many uh, enterprise uh, technologies that are part of uh, RAD Studio XE3. Uh, so very much everything that I'm going to show today is also applicable to C++ Builder. In this presentation, I'm going to focus on Delphi. And DataSnap is one of the enterprise technologies that are part of uh, RAD Studio. So we have also uh, other enterprise technologies is DB Express. Uh, that gives a possibility to access uh, remote uh, SQL uh, databases. Also cloud API, talking to uh, different uh, services uh, in the cloud for Azure from Microsoft and Amazon uh, Web Services. Also, there is a possibility to create uh, SOAP uh, Web Services, both servers and clients, uh, with um, Delphi and C++ Builder. Probably the most flexible and the most powerful uh, enterprise uh, technology in RAD Studio is DataSnap. On this slide you have an overview of different uh, features uh, that uh, DataSnap provides. Uh, so you can create, it's all about creating client server systems, so uh, applications that can communicate uh, over the network. So that's a basis of scalability. You don't want to have your client talking directly to the database, but you would rather have a client talking to the server and the server in turn can talk uh, to the database. So starting from top, uh, you can create a server, data snap servers in Delphi or C++ language. Uh, you have a number of different uh, server application types. So your server can be a standalone executable, uh, so VCL uh, or console application or Windows service, which is quite uh, useful when you want to uh, automatically uh, start your server instances so you don't have to start your server application. It's also possible to host uh, data snap servers within a web server application, uh, either as a standalone uh, indie, so this is uh, executable and um, web server and the web application in one executable. It's very useful for debugging, but also for deployment. Or you can implement your data snap server as a DLL and deploy uh, to a 
any web server that support uh, ISAPI. Then within uh, your servers, the functionality that uh, is offered to clients uh, is implemented on the server methods instances. So I, I'm going to discuss different options, uh, but basically uh, with a server option, uh, you have one server methods instance for all connected clients. Uh, with session, uh, you have a server instance per every connected client and invocation uh, creating uh, server methods on the fly just for the duration of the method call. And there are also different um, message exchange patterns possible. Uh, so traditional request, request uh, response pattern where uh, clients are talking to servers uh, to some server methods and the server method re returns the uh, result. It's also possible the callback um, message exchange pattern when the server is asynchronously notifying the client. Also, uh, talking about uh, different methods, uh, it's all about what kind of parameters uh, you can pass uh, to server methods. Uh, so with DataSnap, uh, you can pass very much all simple types and also uh, you can you have special support for uh, encoding your uh, more complex structure as JSON and there are also support for special types like for example T dataset is a valid type that you can return uh, from the uh, server methods. Then this functionality uh, is accessible uh, based on the authentication and authorization so uh, there are special components uh, to authenticate the end user and also to authorize uh, to a certain functionality based on roles. And then uh, going further, uh, we have also possibility to uh, use different communication protocols. So uh, TCP IP, HTTP and HTTPS. And then you can also uh, use uh, the transport filters uh, to perform uh, encryption and compression um, on the uh, actual bytes that are sent from the server to the client. There are also different types of uh, clients, so clients can be either native clients or um, web browser based clients, so JavaScript clients, and then uh, clients running on different uh, platforms uh, that are supported by uh, data snaps so both desktop and mobile platforms. And also we have a concept of um, mobile connectors, uh, so you can generate a client-side proxy in a number of different languages. Uh, so this is this includes Delphi, C++, of course, but also other languages like Objective-C, uh, Delphi, Prism, Free Pascal, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, and PHP. So this is a big picture, and I'm going to uh, just discuss some of the uh, basic skills you need to uh, have in order to create uh, successful uh, applications. So I'm going to start uh, from a, a very basic uh, very basic uh, application um, that is going to be um, just a hello world application and so just very quickly to show you what are the steps to create a um, very basic uh, hello world application so we start typically uh, with a new uh, new uh, data snap uh, server wizard so there is a number of different uh, options here so data snap server is um, server that is a standalone executable a data snap rest application is a data snap server that is a web application so i'm going to go for a, this data snap uh, server standalone executable and the wizard gives us a number of options so uh, i can implement it, this application as a vcl forms application console application or service application so i'm going for to go for a default options uh, so the VCL forms application and then uh, you can select different server features so uh, you can have your server uh, listening on multiple different uh, ports using multiple different uh, protocols uh, we can choose for uh, support for authentication and authorization a uh, wizard can generate some uh, sample methods so I'm going to go for uh, all the default values so just TCP IP protocol and some uh, sample methods click on next I can actually go ahead and test the port so this is by default port 211 but you can change it here uh, so um, this is going to be just a, a TCP IP based uh, server so on the last uh, mm, tab you can specify the base class for your server methods implementation so this could be T component or if you want to have some um, non-visual components on the server uh, T data module or, or TDS server module. I'm going to go for a 
T component and click on finish. So the wizard has generated for me uh, an empty uh, server application. So I'm going to uh, save it in some uh, good location. So uh, this is going to be my uh, hello world, uh, hello world um, folder. And also I'm going to give this application name form server unit one is the main uh, the unit for my main form uh, and some default names I'm going to keep them and the project itself is going to be called um, data snap server so uh, save it so this is actually uh, now inside of my project group uh, I have a data snap server uh, so um, the form server is not very important it's because I have selected the VCL forms as a type of the application so this is just an empty form what is more important is this server container unit so these are uh, all the uh, different components that makes up the data snap server application uh, so you have a server component which is uh, um, the heart of the data snap server uh, it has a stop and start methods and uh, you can also connect to it uh, in different um, components uh, so uh, for every protocol uh, you have a separate transport uh, component so I have selected TCP IP so this represents connectivity on port 211 using TCP IP uh, I could actually add more uh, server transport components and so my server could listen on multiple uh, different ports so this server comp server transport component is connected to my main server also there is a concept of the server class uh, so this is a component uh, that acts as a bridge uh, between the server so it has the property called uh, server but also it has this on get class um, method that actually uh, accepts the type of the server method so this is very important uh, because the server methods um, server methods uh, are instances are created uh, dynamically so you don't as a programmer you don't create them you just specify the type and also you specify the life cycle so this could be a session a server or invocation I'm going to go into deeper into it in the next uh, demo but for time being uh, let's keep it default value and server methods is the functionality that the uh, clients can call so by default uh, any public and published method uh, defined on the server methods uh, implementation will be automatically made available to clients so this is my uh, server I can just uh, run it so in order to develop a client my server has to be uh, running so I'm just going to to start it I'm going to click on allow access uh, so clients can talk to it I can minimize it and now I can just very quickly create uh, a client to it so I'm adding to the project group a new project so I'm going to go for a FireMonkey application so in this way my client can be either Windows or Mac application I'm going to uh, save it so I'm going to save it uh, in the same uh, directory uh, that I have uh, created uh, my um, server in so I'm going to form a client unit one as the name of the uh, for uh, of the project and data snap uh, client as a name of the project uh, for the client so this is just an empty uh, fire monkey uh, application uh, and now if I want to turn it into a, a client I need to go uh, and use the wizard file new other and I'm going to go for a data snap server and data snap client module so this will generate a number of files for me first uh, it will ask me okay where is my server I know it's local but could be also a remote server uh, it's a standalone server uh, the protocol is TCP IP it does has to be running so I can actually here test the port uh, if I'm actually can talk to it so if I cannot uh, connect the wizard will not be able to proceed because it's going to dynamically uh, generate a uh, code for me so the wizard has generated when I click on save two new uh, units the client module unit click on save it and client classes unit so this uh, client um, classes unit uh, is a, a client side uh, implementation of my server side method so this is a proxy so I need to instantiate uh, this uh, class 
passing it a connection to the uh, to a, a data to the data snap server and i have all the functionality echo string reverse string that it was implemented uh, on the server there is also a handy client module unit generated uh, so it contains a, a sql connection component and uh, so it has a driver is data snap so this is the same component that you would use to talk to a, a remote database but in this case we are talking to a data snap server and uh, also it has the server methods uh, client uh, property so notice th when i call this uh, server methods client property uh, automatically with the first call the connection will be open to the uh, server and my proxy class will be uh, instantiated and returned for all subsequent calls. So in this way, I don't have to do uh, much on the client, and in most cases, this is just enough. So I can now add to my uh, my uh, application a button and maybe an edit, the edit, and I'm going to call the reverse string uh, method. So here I'm going to go for a text. So uh, hello, and this is going to basically just uh, uh, take the hello and call a reverse string method so in the button uh, when i call and uh, click on button i need to use uh, the other unit that was generated a uh, client and uh, module unit uh, so in this unit uh, i can actually take and the contents of the edit so i'm going to display it in the edit whatever was returned from my client module uh, server methods client and uh, echo or reverse string and pass uh, to it an edit text. So in this way uh, I have uh, implemented my client and uh, this is very much uh, basic stuff. I can click on a button and uh, this will uh, take the contents of the edit, send it to the remote uh, server and uh, display the result. So this is uh, quite straightforward um, and uh, also and there are also different uh, options for uh, life cycle uh, management. So in the next demo that is already pre-built, uh, I have a more complex server. Uh, so my server actually, what I need to make sure I remember is to stop the server from the previous demo that was still running. And here I have a more complex um, server container unit. Uh, so again, I have just a one TCP transport, but I have a three different uh, server class method every with a different uh, invocation life cycle uh, option so one is an invocation so server method that is connected to it and which is on get class is a t server methods invocation will be just created on the fly and uh, the other options are the same so all those uh, server methods are very straightforward uh, i have just um, basically uh, they have a method get id and this method is um, uh, returning the id uh, that was uh, generated uh, on the fly uh, actually in the constructor so in data snap there is this handy generate session id uh, method that i can actually use so this will basically generate a, a random string made of um, three numbers but actually the string so this is something that i'm returning and all those uh, classes have exactly the same uh, implementation it's impossible to reuse the same class in different um, server methods unit but in this way i can demonstrate uh, different options so my client is quite straightforward uh, it has uh, um, i'm basically calling uh, the server methods uh, on different uh, on different uh, get id on different uh, clients so the session client the server client and invocation client so for this uh, i need to actually start uh, the server and so the server has to be running and now i can actually uh, start a, a number actually it makes sense to do it uh, two times and uh, to start it actually more than once so i have now actually i cannot run two times from here i need to go uh, into my uh, windows explorer and start the second instance uh, directly from here and uh, so i can actually go here and start my uh, client from here and like this so now i have um, two uh, two client uh, two clients running so let uh, let me actually show you if i click on lifecycle server i see on both clients that the id is the same so this means that um, if you want to achieve scalability and you have a certain um, 
functionality that you want to uh, be um, accessible to multiple different uh, um, clients, you can use a server option for lifecycle. So in this way, every time I click get ID, I'm getting the same. So I have one instance on the server. The lifecycle session, when I call uh, get ID, when I call multiple times, uh, I have uh, the same ID but it's different. So one, every client has its own um, server method instance. If I click on invocation, every time I click on invocation of both clients, I, I'm getting a, a different um, option. So in this way, uh, it's very important to, when you design your uh, scalable data snap servers to uh, select an appropriate uh, option for a uh, for your option. Okay, let's go and uh, very quickly um, go um, with uh, some more realistic scenarios. If you want to create systems, typically you want to talk uh, to some uh, remote uh, databases. So I'm going to demonstrate now in this uh, next um, example how you can create uh, very quickly a multi-tier um, database application. So I'm going to use again uh, just a plain a server, but this time it's important that I'm selecting a DS server module as a base class because this will provide me with an IAP server uh, implementation in this way. And uh, this is actually part of the magic that is going to ha be happening here. So I'm going to save this um, a server, uh, save all, and I'm going to actually uh, save it uh, in a code range 7 and in this case, uh, multi tire. Um, multi tire up so this is going to be my uh, form server unit one it's not very important all the defaults and uh, the project will be um, um, multi-tire server okay so in order to build a, a application that talks to the database I need to actually I have uh, some data. So I have an interbase uh, database. In this case, uh, I can use any of the databases that comes with, uh, with RAT Studio installation. I can actually go for a DB demos. Inside of the DB demos, there is this um, customer database. If I right click here, I can actually preview the data. So this is the data uh, that I want to make uh, available for editing uh, to um, a remote a client. So let's uh, have a look what is the process here. Uh, so I'm going to actually, uh, my server methods unit uh, is actually um, based on a data module. So this special uh, data module that is actually DS server module. Uh, so this DS server module uh, is actually based on a DS server module base. And this actually implements an IAP server uh, interface method. So these are the functionality that will be automatically uh, made available uh, to my client. So I don't have to worry about it, but I know this is important that you use the select uh, appropriate class. So now if you want to make uh, this data available uh, to, the, uh, to the user, you can drag uh, the DB demos in customer uh, table. So I'm going to have a, a connection uh, and a unidirectional data set. And uh, I need also to add a T data set provider component. So this is a, a very important uh, part here. So this data set provider uh, has to be, actually I can give it a, some specific name. In generic case, it could be multiple of them. So customer, and I need to connect it to the data set. And that's very, very much it. So now uh, the customer, all the providers uh, that are available here will be made available through the get provider names. So in this way, I can start building my uh, client. So this is actually my server, and I can now uh, run it. So every time I want to uh, create a, actually I need to stop the other one because it's not going to, uh, to run. So let me do it one more time. Okay, so my server is now uh, starting, allow access. And now let's build a, a client for it. Again, it's going to be a new uh, FireMonkey desktop uh, HD uh, application. Uh, so I'm going now to add a T-SQL connection component. Uh, so this is a component that points to the, uh, needs to have a driver as selected as a data snap. I don't want to have any login prompts 
want to see if I can connect or not. Okay, I can connect. So now if I want to build a, a database application, I need something called DS provider connection. So this is a connection component, provider connection component that I need to actually connect to a SQL connection and I need to specify a server class name. So I remember that I have not changed anything. So this is just server methods one. So this has to match the actually the name of the class. There could be multiple class on the server and I see if I can connect. I see I can connect, which is great. So now uh, I can just use a T a client data set a component and specify uh, its uh, remote server uh, to be my DS provider connection and the provider name I can see that dynamically I have returned this DSP customer and now if I'm lucky I can click on OK and I should have uh, data. So now uh, using uh, FireMonkey uh, in XC3 uh, I can actually go ahead and set multi-tire up, save all the default uh, options a multi tire uh, client, so this is going to be okay. A multi tire client and the um, project group doesn't really matter how it's called. And now, using um, visual um, data bindings, I can actually uh, go ahead and uh, um, generate some uh, use actually um, a wizard uh, to uh, do the rest of the work for me. Live bindings wizard, I want to uh, link a grid uh, with a uh, with, with a data source. Uh, so I'm going to actually go ahead and click on select uh, grid, uh, select the client data set, uh, can also add a, a data source and uh, navigator. And in this way, uh, I'm already there. So I probably need also to add a button here. So this will be like a big button on top of the screen uh, with a big name called uh, apply updates because it's quite important that I actually, the changes that are in the client data set uh, are actually uh, applied to the server. So I'm going to align it to the top. So I have a very big uh, button and click this uh, client data set dot one dot client data set dot one and uh, apply uh, updates minus one and that's it. And now I can actually go ahead, take this uh, navigator, align it to the uh, top as well and take this uh, client db grid align it to the client and I should have a, a fully functional uh, database application. So if I run uh, now this client uh, I can see a uh, data coming from the uh, from a database. I mean, let's change something Uni Unisco free click on this one and click on apply updates. Let's go out of this application Let's run it again to see if the changes has been uh, persisted. And now I can see that UNISCO is now free. So in this way, very easy, you can create a database and multi-tier applications, and it's very quite uh, straightforward. Okay, uh, so it's quite a lot of different things to, uh, to demonstrate. Uh, so let me actually show you the basis uh, of a, uh, of a um, how to make your application more scalable for using callbacks. So I have this uh, simple uh, broadcast uh, server and client um, application. So my server, in fact, is a um, default server. I have not changed anything uh, in from what was generated by the wizard. In fact, I don't even need the server methods uh, at all because the functionality to uh, make uh, callbacks and to notify other clients is built in into every data snap server. So from this perspective, I don't have to uh, worry about it. I just need to make sure that my server is running. So first I need to stop the other server and to run this server. Okay, so my server is running. Again, it's listening on port uh, TCP IP 211. And now my client is a little bit more uh, involving. Uh, so uh, on the client, uh, I have a a different uh, uh, different uh, co connections so actually uh, there are uh, two uh, two different uh, two different components on this form uh, so uh, if I want to uh, do uh, callbacks uh, I need to uh, define a class uh, that is derived from a tdbx uh, callback uh, so this class uh, I need to override its execute method 
so when the server is going to notify the client, this method will be executed on the server. So um, I have this uh, also, uh, the, this is implementation of my method, so I have this little log message. So on the form, uh, here is a memo, and to make it more organized, I have implemented a straightforward log uh, message. So basically, whatever is passed to it will be displayed uh, in the memo. So in the form create uh, event, uh, I need to actually use uh, the other component, this DS client callback uh, channel manager component. And uh, here I can actually uh, use uh, the, this as a, um, you can use it as a hard coded uh, manager ID. Uh, in reality, when you want to have a peer-to-peer -peer communication, you want to have every manager ID, or this is actually the ID uh, of a client uh, to be randomly generated. Uh, you have also uh, the, the callback instance itself has need to have a name. Again, I can generate it. And here, what I'm doing is I need to register callback uh, with a certain channel. So I, my channel is code rate 7 channel. Uh, this is the, my address of the remote machine uh, that is the server running and uh, I'm giving the name of the callback and creating the callback instance uh, in place. So this will be the instance that will be registered with a channel so whenever the callback arrives uh, there will be something happening. So here I have um, actually in, in reality I have added this SQL connection only for testing and uh, I don't really need this component here so it could be easily uh, actually I can get rid of this uh, component. It's not necessary for uh, for callbacks. Uh, so uh, actually, no. I I need to have it because I need to make. If I want to make a connection, I need to have this SQL connection component, and I need to specify things like data snap, and uh, don't want to have a login prompt, and click on connect. That if I can connect. So this is. Uh, I don't need. Uh, any special proxies generated that you have seen previously uh, because this is part of the base class that every proxy is uh, derived from. So I, instead of using proxy, I can just instantiate just a plain base class of every proxy defined in a DS proxy. And it has its method called broadcast to channel where I specify the channel name. In this case, it's my code rate 7 channel. And I need to pass the JSON, uh, actually JSON encoded uh, message. So this could be any data structure. And when I'm done, actually, I can uh, basically release the client. So now, if I run uh, this application, uh, actually, there's an error. So form client callbacks. So what it does not like, uh, form client. OK, so this should be a different uh, name. I have change it so I need to paste it here so that should be now okay uh, so basically in my execute method when the callback arrives I'm going to log and um, whatever came from the message to the uh, client so if I run just one client I can actually it's not very interesting but in fact I'm sending the callback uh, to the server and receive it in the myself but I can also um, run more Actually, again, I have to start this uh, from the Windows uh, Explorer and uh, my callbacks. So uh, here in Code Rage 7, uh, my simple callbacks sessions. So uh, simple callbacks. And in Win32 debug, I have a simple uh, actually broadcast client. So I can now see that I can talk to a number of them. So in fact, they are identical. So I have two different uh, clients. And so I can put in hello one. So I can see this hello one goes to all connected clients and hello two here to see that it goes to all connected clients. So this is also a very uh, important uh, feature of a um, data snap architecture uh, to be able to actually uh, do these callbacks and uh, send them to uh, different uh, connected clients. Okay, so I need to rush because it's now 30, 
almost uh, my time is uh, almost done so I'm going to go for the last demo which is a role-based uh, security uh, so here in this uh, demo I'm demonstrating uh, how you can use uh, security so uh, on a server methods unit uh, actually it's quite straightforward but I have um, generated this added uh, custom attribute T roll out uh, setting to admin so this is basically uh, role based um, functionality so the server method uh, is uh, returning the price of a certain stock symbol and this is actually it's okay to call it by whatever client but you don't want everybody to be able to change the price of the symbol so this requires that you are in the uh, admins group so in the in the uh, main uh, container here I have this authentication manager so this authentication manager was generated automatically by the wizard I have selected to add authentication and uh, authorization and um, there is also a method that was generated automatically on uh, user authenticate uh, so basically depending on on a user and password I can uh, either authenticate or not the user so basically if the user is not authenticated it won't be able to uh, to uh, call any of the server methods uh, and also uh, I can add the user to a certain user roles so in this way I can actually make sure that user can uh, call some other methods so uh, there was also on, on user auto authorize uh, generated by the wizard but I have uh, removed it uh, and now I have a little option that if the user is not uh, empty then it's uh, authenticated fine and if the username is admin I'm adding it to the admins role so this is also uh, interesting here that uh, I'm uh, I have also modified a little bit uh, the implementation of my uh, of my client module uh, so basically uh, if you want you don't want uh, to hard code the host name uh, or the port name or the communication protocol so all those uh, values are actually uh, part of the SQL connection uh, so if you go to the uh, params uh, this is uh, it can be embedded but you can also programmatically uh, change it so uh, in this example I'm basically specify a method connect that takes all this information and provides it before opening the connection so in this way uh, my client so actually I need to make sure that server is running I'm going to run the server and uh, in my client code uh, I have this uh, method to to call a different um, to either connect or disconnect and call get price and call um, change price so uh, let me actually run the client to see uh, what are the options here uh, so if I'm actually the username is admin I can connect and click on get price and change price but if the user is not admin and provide something else connect I will be able to get price but I won't be able to change the price remote error admin 23 is not authorized and if I disconnect and specify an empty username I click on connect I won't be able to connect at all because I'm not um, authenticated so this is uh, quite uh, straightforward and uh, also it gives me a possibility to actually pass an other uh, host so in the last demo uh, of this session I'm going to close it let's have a look how you can deploy uh, such a server uh, to uh, to the cloud so here you see the um, console uh, for the um, the Amazon web services so uh, in the cloud you can see I have uh, two different uh, machines running and uh, so I have this Delphi Labs machine uh, I have uh, assigned to it an, a dynamic IP address this, this is this uh, address uh, 54 uh, 247176135 uh, so this is the um, address of this uh, machine and uh, I have actually uploaded to this uh, machine uh, this uh, secure server uh, so there are plenty of possibilities here so there are load balancers here uh, so you can have um, possibility to start your server instances depending on a load you can add an IP address to the load balancer you have also security groups so my server is in a quick launch security group which basically says that there is a rule that make it possible for the 
in protocol uh, TCP IP to call on a 211 port. So this has to be opened. And now I can actually go and uh, connect uh, to my remote machine using a remote uh, desktop. And uh, another thing you need to make sure is uh, to uh, go to the um, your um, uh, server uh, um, uh, firewall and specify rules. So in this case, I have specified the rule uh, to open uh, TCP IP connections on all ports because this is now uh, controlled uh, on a higher level in the AWS infrastructure, so this is fine. Uh, so now I have also a possibility to uh, now uh, start some servers. Uh, so I have this my role-based security uh, server uploaded uh, to the cloud. Uh, so it's now uh, starting, and I can go uh, to my to my client and uh, now run it. But instead of running it from here, I can actually uh, connect it to the cloud. So five four two four seven. Uh, 176 uh, 135 if I did everything correct click on connect and now I can actually get price change price so and this is also uh, this is running uh, on uh, on Windows but this is fire fire monkey so I can also uh, compile this client uh, to be a Mac uh, client uh, talking to my uh, server uh, easily so now I should see that the same uh, server is now uh, running here. If I provide a proper uh, proper uh, connection, I can connect and now call the same functionality uh, from the client, uh, this time being this uh, Mac client. So in this presentation, there was quite a lot of to, uh, to cover, uh, but in fact, uh, what I wanted to demonstrate was different uh, scalability options uh, within uh, the um, within uh, enterprise architectures that you can build with uh, with uh, DataSnap. Uh, so you build you use DataSnap architecture if you want to have a num multiple different clients possibly running on different operating systems uh, using different um, different types of programs. So this could be Delphi uh, clients, but also other languages other operating systems so you can connect to the same um, centralized functionality uh, deployed to a, a scalable infrastructure like for example uh, amazon web services ec2 cloud uh, you have a security uh, you have fine grained uh, fine grade uh, role based uh, authentication and authorization a uh, possibility to do callbacks and uh, work with different uh, server methods uh, life cycle okay there are some uh, references here, uh, so I recommend going to Amazon.com uh, white papers for uh, different information how to deploy uh, in a scalable fashion your uh, data snap servers. And also there is a Delphi Labs uh, series that I have created uh, with uh, Rad Studio XC that demonstrates some of those techniques uh, that I have demonstrated today. Okay, thank you very much uh, for watching this uh, Code Rage 7 uh, episode building scalable um, data snap applications uh, with Rust Studio XE3. Uh, on this slide, you see the address to my blog where I'm going to post uh, all the demos uh, presented today. Thank you very much. First question from Alf is he, he had uh, Delphi 2010 and he was migrating a data snap application. We got an error that TDS HTTP service authentication manager is lacking. Is there some new, he mentions TD authentication manager, or is there some other change? You see the first one there, TDS HTTP service authentication manager. I don't remember not, back to 2010. I'm not sure exactly uh, which version the authentication manager was in, uh, introduced, but uh, the data snap architecture has been uh, evolving uh, since its uh, introduction in the um, Delphi 2010, in 2009. In fact, if you uh, look into the back into the history, uh, it's all about Midas. It was introduced back in, I believe, Delphi uh, 3. But in Delphi 2009, uh, it was completely re-architectured. And uh, since Delphi 2009, uh, we see new features uh, introduced with every new release. So uh, I believe that the, the, the authentication authorization was introduced in Delphi 2010. 
So, uh, and uh, also the wizards to make the applications are also evolving. So, uh, some of the things uh, that you can do now with a wizard uh, was were available in the previous versions, but uh, you have to do it manually. So, I'm not sure if uh, the authorization and uh, the authorization wizard was uh, available in this previous version. What I'm tell uh, authorization. What I'm saying to uh... Alpha is one one good way would be to with XZ3 just go and start the wizard, choose the authentication authorization check boxes in the wizard, and see what it generates. See what it generates for the underlying classes, and then compare those to what you had in 2010. But I'll also uh, do some research to look back. I try to forget some of the older versions just over time. I, uh, I would like to send my. Uh... Uh, regards to Alf, and uh, I remember Alf from uh, from uh, from Nor Norway and Oslo events that you've never been to, and Alf is always very uh, uh, contributing. And uh, and uh, basically, when you uh, select uh, or check the authentication authorization um, um, options uh, within the wizard, the the main uh, result is that the wizard would add uh, this. Uh, authentication um, manager component to the server form and generate these two events uh, on authenticate and authorize uh, so I, prob I probably I never tried to uncheck the authenticate and just uh, um, actually the other way around to uh, uncheck the authorize and uh, only check the authenticate event uh, so Probably that would actually only generate the unauthenticate event. So I think this is very important thing uh, in terms of security uh, to understand the difference between the authentication authorization. Uh, so in the in the data stop uh, security model, um, the first thing is to, to to authenticate the user. So this is the actually the, in terms of security, this is the first step. So. The, the, the system needs to know who you are, so it needs to understand uh, whether you are okay to connect to the server functionality or not. Uh, so on authenticate event is uh, logically first, and this is where you should check uh, your um, credentials, things like username and password, and decide whether you are trusted. And then the, the second stage is actually to authorize, and this is the a fine grade uh, security model in DataSnap where you can decide okay uh, if you are in a certain role then you are uh, granted uh, access to certain functionality or not uh, so uh, that's the that's the uh, architecture here so um, first you need to be authenticated and then you can be authorized or not uh, to um, call certain methods and there's a there's a note here. Matthias was a, was asking about what about uh, you know T persons and so on. And I, I'm mentioning to him that in your in your Delphi Labs 11 tutorials you have a plain old, you have one tutorial. I forget if it's number 10 or number nine. That's about plain old objects, right? Yeah, actually, there's something that I got this comment from uh, Thomas uh, on on the chat here that maybe it should be not not. So, ma so many demos, and you can see uh, from, from from the presentation that I was really rushing, and uh, actually that was I was recording this presentation more than once, and I realized that it's very difficult to cover everything that I wanted to cover, but some of the things I really want to cover, and uh, yeah, data snap is so, such a rich uh, architecture that is almost uh, impossible to to uh, really cover everything, so you have to select certain things. So I, I have actually uh, dis decided not to cover any of the REST or web uh, uh, things that are very important to the um, web architectures. So uh, yeah, to the data stuff architectures. So yeah, that's a difficult choice, and uh, it's impossible to cover everything. No, and, and it was meant to be. And I mentioned in the in the in my comment that this whole this this section specifically was to give a, a, an overview and show all the choices that people can explore further. They can also, since it was going fast, they can watch the replay and pause and take each in chunk. And then ultimately, going back over to your course, which I think I have 
listed there, and I'm answering uh, Matthias's question about plain old objects. That was episode 10 uh, of the 11 episodes, so it's there. Uh, Alpha's asking, is it, can a single user have more than one role? I you can add a, a user uh, to a multiple um, allowed and denied roles. So basically, uh, in the on authentic, uh, especially in the uh, on uh, on authorized uh, event, no, on authenticate event, uh, in the in the code you can actually add uh, a user to multiple both uh, allowed and denied roles. So the user can be in the multiple roles. So that's not a problem. Yeah. yeah so and again, there's that episode five. Uh, in the series about authentication authorization. Is it possible to send a filtered T data set as a return type in one of the DataSnap server methods and to stay filtered even if the DataSnap client receives it? Well, is it, it's just a data set of rows, right, that, that would get... I, I, I think that there is a confusion in the question, yeah. actually. Uh, one thing is uh, what kind of uh, parameter types you can return from right. uh, server methods. So a T data set is actually uh, is okay to to return. Uh, so that's actually a very interesting uh, feature of DataSnap that you can define your server method uh, to return just an abstract because T data set is is a base class for all the data sets for client data sets, BD data sets, DBX with data sets, and you can still um, define it and DataSnap will know how to actually serialize it. And, and the second thing is uh, filters. So filters are really independent from f from the types that you can pass uh, from a server method. So filters are really uh, something on the transport layer. So uh, yeah, you can return T data sets from a server methods. There are two different filters. You have uh, data snap filters, which are transport filters between uh, servers right. and clients. But we also have filters on the T client data sets when you actually limit the number of uh, records that you see. Yeah, but uh, that, that, that doesn't, that, that T client data sets filters has n nothing to do with data snap. Roger's got this one. I'm trying to see. I have a desktop app with an independent data module. I have another unit which depends on the data module. Then I have a UI that uses the objects. What general course should I take to convert this to data snap server client application? Any suggestions? I always pull apart. First thing I do is I look at data modules and say, hey, can I put, I, let's put that data module in a data snap server. Right? Yeah, Just I think decouple, that's, decouple that's, that's, the client, the thin client application from, from the data module that has business objects and calculated fields, whatever it might have. Then it separate that from the database itself, right? Yeah, I think in a classical scenario, when you have a, a, just a um, just a standalone application with a data module with with some data sets, uh, you would like to have uh, this data module on the server. Plus, uh, you want to make sure that uh, that the server methods uh, class is derived from the uh, TDS server module class to make sure it works in a multi-tier scenario. And then for every data data set that you want to expose from the server, you need to add a one data set provider a component. So this is actually important thing because uh, the, this base class that you have your server methods class uh, knows about the provider uh, components and will act automatically expose it to the client. So you basically for every data set you add a data set provider and then you need to uh, build your client from from scratch in a sense. So basically uh, you can still use your existing uh, old style uh, data or components but maybe you would like to go for a new visual uh, live binding. So both architectures would, would work. So uh, on a client you need to have a T-SQL connection component uh, connected to the server and, um, and the provider connection component that uh, acts as a, a remote server and then for every data set you want to have a one T client data set on the client.